Welcome to Modern Aikidoist Podcast. I've been producing these podcasts for coming up on a year now, and this is my 100th episode. It feels like a special milestone, and I want to express my thanks and gratitude to all of you, my audience, for listening, commenting, asking questions, liking, sharing, and supporting my work. I'd like to offer my special thanks and utmost appreciation to those of you who have donated. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. I very much believe that the world is stepping forward into a new age. It used to be that people had to buy things, information in particular, before seeing it and knowing what they're getting. I think the open source economy is showing its superiority. If people are happy with what they get, they offer something in return. Just like at a fine restaurant, you order and eat your meal, and if you're pleased with it, then you pay. This is a civilized way to do business, and presumes that people are honest and fair. If you find value, please consider leaving a donation via the PayPal tip jar. Even the smallest donations are greatly appreciated. There's a link in the description. The episode which launched this podcast series was titled Aikido, Now and Into the Future. Well, it's now the future, so how is Aikido advancing? There have been some exciting things happening. Today, I'm going to share with you some of what I've heard from behind the scenes that give me hope to what is evolving, as well as great things which are in the works. In that first episode, I talked about the state of Aikido at the time. In many respects, I think that the factions which exist are largely the same today as they were then, and that really isn't going to change much. Nor do I think it should. For those who will practice Aikido and get something out of it which is positive, it really doesn't matter what form it takes. As I've said in other episodes, it would be helpful if there were some kind of term or terms different approaches to Aikido could use to make it clear to the public what they are. More on that in a bit, though. I cannot start talking about the future of Aikido without addressing the King Kong-sized gorilla in the room, which is the effect that coronavirus is having on dojos. This is a situation which is changing by the day, and that's no exaggeration. This time last week, there was concern, and now many dojos have closed their doors. Some are offering online classes to keep interest and engagement with students. This is not a bad thing, and we must all use our heads and take sensible measures to keep people safe. The impact that shutting down schools will have is going to be profound. The economic contagion will affect far more people than the virus ever would, and to far worse degrees. This is not just Aikido, but all dojos and martial arts will suffer to some degree. Almost all dojos are not solid revenue generators. There are precious few which are financially successful. For the rest, they are more labors of love, which do well if they take in enough to pay the bills. It's easy to lose students and slow to get new ones. Just moving a dojo a few miles can result in losing half of your students. We humans are creatures of habit, and if we take a month or two away from something, there's a good chance we won't return. Some will, but how many dojos can stand to have no revenue for a month or two, then lose 25 to 50% of their student base, and still make enough to pay the bills? And I'm only talking about change of habit here. We must also consider the economic influence. Some dojos are asking students to continue paying tuition even though they cannot attend classes. That might work for a month, but my guess is that there will be a big drop-off when month two arrives. Rent and bills don't take a month off. Also consider students are very likely to be hit hard in the pocketbook, too. Not all of them will have the option to work from home or get paid not to work. We are really not seeing this impact fully yet, but I suspect that many will be reducing their working hours and taking pay cuts, or businesses who cannot afford to pay employees without having any revenue themselves will just lay them off or go out of business. The bottom line is that if students are suffering economic hard times themselves, they very well may not be able to pay tuition at all, even if they want to. I believe this is going to impact martial arts training hard and will be coming in a few months. Many dojos will close permanently. Aikido itself will carry on, and certainly some instructors will start up new dojos as their finances allow. Starting a new group is very difficult, so it's far better to keep a group going if you can than have to start from scratch later. I've seen dojos try to pick back up again after taking months or a year off, and it doesn't go smoothly. Growth is slow, and it's harder when you only have a couple of people to start with. In the grand scheme of things, this coronavirus hysteria will blow over. When that happens, Aikido will continue. Enough about the coronavirus influence. Let's talk about what has developed in the last couple of years. My hope with establishing the Facebook group Aikido the Martial Side was to gather practitioners 
who are either experienced in martial Aikido or interested in having their Aikido be practical and useful for self-defense. The group has grown to over 11,000 members, and there's been a wealth of great information shared there. I've learned a great deal and have taken what I've learned onto the mat. A lot of what I've learned has been in a form of Aikido history, knowledge of Osensei and Sakaku Takeda, and many other things too. I've gotten many comments from members about how what is shared there has expanded how they look at the art, and that has profoundly affected their practice. I'm delighted that people have gathered together and are sharing their insights. Discussions are fantastic ways for us to learn. It's not just about how we do technique. The mind leads the body. Discussions and conversation allow you to open your mind and learn new perspectives. That said, we learn far more on the mat than we do anywhere else. Since I started this podcast, I've gotten onto the mat with a number of Aikido practitioners whom I likely never would have met otherwise. You may have seen some of the video footage of my meetings with Lenny Sly, Francisco de los Cobos, and Corky Quakenbush. These were all great experiences, and I learned a lot with them. I've also met and talked with far more people than I can count, and the conversations we've had are fantastic. A handful of those are growing beyond conversations, and we're starting to collaborate on sharing material, and it's very likely that there will be workshops and seminars coming in the future. As much as I like discussing Aikido and sharing ideas with people, the mat is where I enjoy Aikido the most. A fundamental concept of Aikido is connection, and there's improvement to be made on how we connect with each other. Social media was a catalyst for some to create friendships and actually meet up in person. It seems mostly, though, it's used as a medium to bicker, argue, and insult each other. Although one would think Aikido practitioners would be better in this regard than most, there is plenty of it from Aikido people. There are some helpful and productive things coming out of the online community. An episode I did on my Randori program sponsored some of these discussions, and I've shared the first levels of my program with a select few individuals. My goal is to work with these instructors and provide them with a full program to train Randori in their dojos. My program is something I've developed over 10 years and have found students love to learn and practice. I'm currently planning on a workshop-based seminar in Victoria, Australia in mid to late January or early February next year. If you're in the area and are interested in coming, please let me know. All are welcome. We don't have an exact date for that yet, but stay tuned for more information. The Aikido world is changing, and there are indicators that the interest in the martial aspect of Aikido is growing. One thing I heard from last year was that a famous Shihan, and I'm not going to mention his name, was teaching at a large seminar. I was told that the Shihan stated that during the seminar they were going to focus more on practical martial Aikido. Now, I have no idea if he was party to any discussions on the Facebook group or heard any of my podcasts, but that really isn't the point, and it doesn't matter. I've heard multiple stories about Shihan who are starting to stray more towards the martial expression of Aikido. Maybe there's something to that. It would be great if this happened, as they are the established leaders of the art and have the most influence over its future. It shows that there is an awakening to a side of Aikido which has been neglected, and interest in it is growing. I'm sad to say that in the last year it appears that the Aikikai is not very interested in this side of Aikido and is not going to play a role in fostering that growth. I believe no large Aikido organization will make any significant headway in this regard, as making such changes will likely threaten their existing student base. It makes sense, and I wouldn't expect them to take the financial risk and jeopardize their organizations. I view this as a short-term gain decision, and in doing so, they give up on the medium and long-term future of the martial art of Aikido. Innovations have always come from creative and unrestricted people. Those who are brave enough to forge ahead to new ground are the people who form the future. Legacy organizations always wither and die. When politics takes center stage, the integrity of the art gets compromised, and that is exactly what has happened to Aikido. I've seen and heard many organizations fracture, and dojos resign and go independent. I had it happen myself back in 2014, and saw a number of dojos local to me go through similar problems. I've also seen it happen to friends, and I'm hearing about it more and more recently. Although it sounds bad, I think this is the best thing for Aikido in the long run. If a dojo is not happy being part of an organization, it's best to move on rather than be miserable. It can be scary going it alone, but this gives you tremendous freedom. 
Right now, there is a network starting to form of people who want to help and support one another in being independent dojos. I'm finding and starting to work with people who want to share material to make Aikido martially sound. It's not as much about selling a prepackaged product as it is about working with people who want the same things of their Aikido and sharing ideas. This is how we get better and start making our Aikido what we want it to be. A few months ago, I put together the Spirit Aikido online program with exactly people like this in mind. I've now filmed more than 50 videos with new ones going up every few days. These are showing techniques and training methods I found success with in my dojo with my own students and how I teach them. I also include mentoring to answer questions and advise for the best ways to introduce these things to your practice group. I've gotten some great feedback on the videos I've shared so far, and I have a lot more to add. As I thought about it, I remembered how many seminars I have gone to. Usually, I'd come away with three to four things which were really great for me to work on. A poor seminar might be one to two, and a great one might leave me with five or six new things. Sadly, the last two seminars I attended, I came away with nothing except examples on how not to teach. There were cringeworthy incidents at both. I'd share the stories, but I want to keep things positive. I found I would spend about $60 at the minimum and up to $150 to attend a seminar. That meant that these morsels of knowledge I was getting were costing about $25 a piece, and that's being fairly conservative. That number also doesn't include travel, lodging, or other expenses. Once you add those up, you're talking $50 a piece easily. With the videos I share, I put out 10 to 12 per month. That comes to less than $2 each and no travel expenses are necessary. We live in an internet age where information is easily available, convenient, and inexpensive. Why give up on this tremendous opportunity to get access to new material? Although that sounds like a plug, and it kind of is, I see it as an advancement in sharing martial flavored Aikido that didn't exist before. I'm hoping more people step up and do something similar. The more sharing we have, the more support we create for those who are interested in making their Aikido practical. This won't come from shihans or large organizations. It will come from innovators and those who forge ahead to the frontiers. Among the many online discussions, I will say that there are quite a few who seem to be obsessed with looking backwards to history. Now, I love history more than most do, and it can give you some really great insights. However, Osensei has been dead for 50 years now, and there really is not much we can learn by arguing about what Osensei said, what he may have meant, and how he did his Aikido. The fact is that the gap between then and now is just too large, and arguments about those things are largely fruitless. Yet some continue to indulge in them. The great irony is that Osensei himself said that Aikido is formless and will change over time, yet some are so stuck in their mind that they cannot seem to move forward. A saying comes to mind, don't look backward too much, because that's not the direction you're headed. Remember your mom telling you, always look where you're going? That is excellent advice. Aikido and any martial art is a living thing which must evolve. Your Aikido will evolve when you associate with those who are looking forward, not backward. We have much to learn from other arts and those with real-world experience in violence and self-defense. We should look upon these people as our peers, not as competition. That's what I view Aikido as being about. We must also prove that we are their peers by being able to show a strong and capable art. I've had direct experience with this, and even had instructor-level practitioners of other arts tell me that they did not have a very good view of Aikido until they got on the mat with me. They said that I turned their opinion of Aikido around 180 degrees, and were very impressed. I mention this not to boast, but to remind you that this is something that each of you can do, too. If it is something you want to do, it will guide your practice and training. The intention will move you to make your practice more challenging and shore up your abilities. It's an investment which pays off very well. You might feel at first that it is merely proving something to someone else, but if the result is self-improvement, then it is well worth the effort. After a lot of thinking on it and seeing how my Aikido has evolved with the other martial influences which have affected it, it seemed that another name might be fitting. I've always felt great loyalty to Aikido and that Aikido didn't need to be as limited as it was. I don't think Osensei viewed Aikido as a hyper-specialized art the way that it is often practiced today. Yet the term Aikido seems to have that image and reputation. I have wondered for a long time how best to deal with the lack of identity that the name Aikido has. 
It doesn't feel right giving up on the name Aikido, but I feel the need for a descriptor, something to more accurately describe the type of Aikido that I practice and teach. The term which seems to suit best is modern Aikibudo. Aikibudo is the term that Osensei himself used to describe his innovative approach to his art to differentiate it from Daito Ru Aiki Jiu Jitsu. It's a broad term which describes the combination of various influences. This is something I strongly believe in and practice. The word modern is to reflect that my Aikido is not an attempt to recreate exactly what Osensei was doing, but to evolve my Aikido based on modern times. I think this reflects not only a sensible approach to any martial art, which must adapt to the times. It also reflects Osensei's own words about Aikido changing and growing in time. Sadly, many Aikido practitioners are stuck in the past and not looking forward toward the future. Some have mentioned that Aiki Jiu-Jitsu might be a fitting name. Jitsu means arts and tends to reflect the physical techniques. My Aikido is certainly strong in the physical, but the reason Aiki Budo seems to fit better is that Aikido to me is far more than the physical techniques themselves. It's a comprehensive approach to strategy and tactics. The physical techniques reflect these perfectly. I've used these strategies and tactics in business, relationships, negotiations, and conflict resolution of all kinds. My students have done the same. Calling what I practice and teach a jitsu would be incomplete. I've heard of other dojo owners adjusting their branding and mission statements to more accurately reflect the type of Aikido they practice. And that's a good thing for the image of Aikido in general. We don't need to fight over who has the rightful claim to the name Aikido, but we do need to better identify and make clear to prospective students what they will be getting when they train with us. There's a great deal to be excited about. The changes and growth I see coming to Aikido are happening. They won't happen quickly, but they have started. It doesn't matter how fast you walk, as long as you keep taking steps in the right direction. There are those in the Aikido community who are doing that, and they will be the Aikido of the future. I'm very excited to see things moving along and where we can take Aikido, or at least the martial aspect of it. What do you think? Please share your ideas in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube, or go to the Facebook group Aikido the Martial Side and post a comment. The Spirit Aikido online program is live. Subscribers get access to video training and mentoring to techniques and training methods that I've adopted from other martial arts to make my Aikido more practical. There's a link in the description section. I invite you to check it out. I always enjoy hearing from listeners of the show, whether through comments or questions. Thank you all for sharing your interest. Enjoy your training.